Hey folks, welcome back to the shop that's not the shop. Before we begin, I want to remind you of the August giveaway. We're giving away a $75 Visa gift card. Go to this video, the one that says enter to win the August giveaway, and follow the directions. Very simple, and enter to win the card. So in this video, I'm going to do a tutorial on how I do a relief carving from start to finish using CarbCo software. Keep in mind that there's more than one way to do this. This just happens to be the way that I do it. There may be other ways that are more efficient or that you feel are better, but this is how I do it. Having said that, I hope you get something out of this video. I hope it helps you in some way. Maybe if you're a little anxious about starting a relief carving, this will give you some insight on how to do it. As always, I hope you get something out of this video. I hope it helps you in some way. If you feel I've earned it, give me a like. Please subscribe, share, comment. I look forward to hearing from you. And let's get started. So we begin by opening up the CarveCo Maker software. And the first step is to start a new model and set our dimensions. In this case, I'm going to use a width of 7 inches by 9 inches. I'm going to place the origin in the center of the carve and I'll explain why I do that later. I'm working in inches and I'm going to hit OK right here. So here's our model. Now, CarveCo is good enough to give us a whole selection of relief carvings to play with here. Those are found right here under this folder. We'll click on that folder. It opens up this screen and as you can see I should say drop down, it's not a screen. You can see there are several. Now what I'm going to do is type in what I'm looking for and you can enter that right here in this box. We'll start by typing the, the word mask and it automatically pops up the masks on the bottom. There's 10 of them to choose from. So we'll just pick a random mask here just to show you what we're doing. And I will grab that mask and drag it over to the project. Once it's there, you can shut this window by clicking this X. And we're good to go with the carving. Now, yes, this is not in the center of the work surface. We push F9 on the keyboard and it will magically jump there. So now that we have the project in the center, the next step is to adjust the size of the image. And we do that right here on this side, under the scale and size area. So what you'll notice is this little lock right here. That lock locks the dimensions so that you don't distort the image. Now if for some reason you wanted to change those separately, you click on the lock here. As you can see, it now has a lock covering width, height, and Z range. If you want to distort those, push this again, and the lock is gone. It'll allow you to independently change these. We don't want that. In this case, we want the width and the height to stay in the same proportion. Now, as you'll notice, if I change the width to a 2, it automatically changes the height. That's because this lock is engaged. Now I want this carving to be roughly six inches tall, so I'll change that back to a six. And you can see that it changes it to 8.2 in the height. Now, when it comes to the Z range, or how tall or how high the, the carving is off the surface, that's adjusted here. But I'll show you a little trick that I use that helps me see how high I want this thing. Hold down the space bar, click the left arrow or left key on your mouse and hold it down and slide to the left. You can now turn this project in any direction you'd like really, but if you do that to the left it gives you the ability to see how far off the surface your carve is. Now you can adjust that with this arrow right here, you left click this and pull it out and as you can see you can yank that thing quite a ways or you can push it back till it's almost flat. From there I go back over to the Z 
and I change it. And in this case, I want one inch of height. Now you'll notice that it doesn't seem like anything has changed. The reason for that is you have to scroll down a little further and hit apply. When you do so, all of those adjustments that you've made here will happen. Before we do that though, I want to point out this box right here. This has been turned and twisted and you can't figure out how to get it back. You push down the space bar and hold the mouse and you just can't seem to get the picture to go right. Click on that box and watch what happens. It puts it back to the original position. If you click on that and hold it like I'm doing, you'll see you will get more choices. Choose the position you'd like and let go of the box and you can see it changes it. That's the one we're looking for. Now back to the size. Hit apply and you'll see the changes take effect. And there we have our relief to the proper size. Once you're satisfied with the size that you have here, and you know you're not going to make any further adjustments, come over here to the side and click Paste. Now once you click that, you can no longer adjust the size of your project. So now you'll notice that the carving is a little bit smaller than the work surface. When I do these carvings, I do my best to get this carving to the edge of the workpiece. With CarveCo Maker Plus you can set up a boundary so that it will only carve the image. In CarveCo Maker, unless I'm mistaken, you cannot. So we try to reduce the work surface as small as possible to eliminate as much waste as possible. However, in the beginning I said I put my origin in the center of the piece. And the reason I do that is so that I can cut the stock that I'm going to put in the machine larger than this outlying size. So that way my clamps still have something to hold on to when all of this wood or material gets removed. And I can show you an image of that here. So as you can see, I've got my clamping bar across the top and my fence across the bottom. The piece is securely held in place while the work surface area has been removed and the carving reveals itself. The next step is tool paths. And the way we set up a relief tool path is with this little icon here. Or you can simply go over here and double click this and find the relief carving tool path in this selection right here. Typically because it's just easier I'll click that. I don't make any adjustments here because this is not CarveCo Plus and it won't allow me to. The first step is to select a finishing tool. That's done right here. Once you click that, this will pop up and you can choose the finishing tool of your choice. Now typically I use a quarter inch ball nose or an eighth inch ball nose. In this case we'll click on the quarter inch then your tool data will pop up. Select the tool. Now that tool is in the toolpath, but we need to go back and click this one more time. And that information then will be opened up here. The tool information. Very important to change this tool number right here in this box. We want to change that to tool number two. After I've put the number in, I just click off of it to get rid of that X, and then I proceed. Now, you can adjust the step over. You can reduce that. That will help eliminate the lines that go across as the tool goes back and forth. On these masks, I didn't feel it necessary. I thought the lines might add a little character, so we're not going to change anything here. Feed and speed are correct. Next, we'll choose the roughing tool. And I don't change anything here. I don't change the raster movement, the way the tool goes back and forth. I don't change angle or I leave the tolerance at 001. I don't change any of this stuff. Multiple Z passes isn't necessary. 
The starting Z will relate to the height of the project. I don't change any of that. But I do change the roughing tool. So we click on that tool. And typically I use a 1 quarter inch flat end mill. We'll select that tool. Now if we click this open, we can see that we get some more information here. Again, I don't change any of this information. I do know that it's tool number one and that is correct. So I continue. I want the movement to be raster, which means back and forth. Again, no change is necessary. I don't change any of the tolerances or allowances. Z slices, I don't change any of this stuff. This will tell you how many passes it's going to be on the final passes. All of this is fine. I don't change any of that as we scroll down. I don't put in lead moves, none of it. Now this height right here, this selection is very important. The reason that this is so important, I actually outlined in another video, but in a nutshell, if this height is too great, your machine will lift, it will top out and give you a false Z. When you hit go or start, the router will plunge through the surface of your stock. Be sure and adjust this. We'll click on it. It gets adjusted right here. It only needs to be 0.25 and in some cases not even that much. But check out that other video on um, router diving and you'll get a better explanation of what that does. All right, now we go to click to define material. That's how we tell the machine how thick our stock is. And in this case, I'm starting with a one and a half inch thick piece of wood. When we change this, you can see that the bottom offset goes to a half an inch. That's basically what will remain after the carving is finished. We'll hit OK. We'll name the tool path. You can name it anything you like. In this case, we'll just put mask. Calculate now. The machine, or this computer I should say, will take a little bit. Depending on how powerful your computer is, is how fast it will create these tool paths. We watch the magic red slide go up across the top of the stock. Once it's complete, we now have a tool path. We can close this window. Now we're not finished. The next step is to come over here to save tool paths. You're going to want to click on that. And that will open up this screen which tells you the tool paths. We have tool number one first, tool number two second. If we invert these, it'll do the finishing passes first and the roughing passes second. We don't want that. So we want to put it back. The machine we use carbide motion and in this case most cases it will choose the top tool first change the name to mask change the name always change your file name or it will delete or change the previous file and you will be very unhappy when you go to carve something and it turns out that it's a completely different file so now that we've changed it I have a Shapoko XXL, so this is correct. You can open that and change it to any number of these devices. Obviously, I'm not going to change it. We'll hit save. You get the little blink. And just out of habit, I hit save a second time. Close it out. And we'd be good to carve. Now, just for the sake of argument, you can go over here and simulate the toolpath to see what it's going to look like once it's carved and it'll allow you to check for any mistakes. So let's hit simulate toolpath and we are patient because my computer is a little slower than it needs to be or than I'd like anyway and that shows us our carving. Again hit the space bar push down on the left arrow key and you can turn it and get a better look at what it's going to look like all right, let's go out to the shop and see what we can do.
can't say that. <laughs> All right, here we are, ready to go to the fancy dress party. Maybe it's a masquerade party. We're ready for that, too. And when you make a mask and you have a lot of fun, what do you do? You make the rest of them. All right, everybody, enough of this silliness. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we sure did. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. Don't forget to sign up for the giveaway video. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, don't show them that.